big deal. You know, we, we're very flexible. Coming up next is Allison. Allison Whitney, please come to the stage. And also right now going on is Leon Lestick, who's going to be in room number one. If you want to have sessions, go into room number two. Allison, Allison, you're here. Ready to go? Yep. Okay, great. Do you want me to end around five or a little bit after? You said. Um, we we got we got twenty five minutes. Okay. Okay. I'm flexible. So Allison Whitney is going to be speaking tonight about inner light. She's an inner light activator. She's going to be speaking about inner child healing, how to connect, build, trust, heal, and awaken your true essence. After the session, you can follow her to room number 13. She's also available for Q&A as well as private sessions. She's a healer, intuitive, medium, uh, men, uh, mental health, and, prevent, and prevents childhood abuse advocate. She's a writer, Reiki master, Akashic Records, card reader, and reverend. She holds a Master of Arts degree in the dance movement, therapy, and counseling. She's a she is a survivor of incest and complex and developmental trauma. Her healing journey awakened her spiritual abilities with her igniting passion, helped to walk others through the depth of trauma. She currently works as a therapist as, and has a long-term goal of brig bridging mental health and spirituality. You can find her at innerlightremembrance.com. So welcome to the stage. You've got 25 minutes. All right. Um, yes, so today I'm going to be talking specifically about inner child healing. Um, I was first introduced to inner child healing through the work of John Bradshaw, who was a psychologist and really did a lot of work in the psychology field of inner child healing, a book that was kind of like a lifeline for me was called Homecoming, Reclaiming and Championing Your Inner Child. Um, I was drawn to inner child healing work because I, being a survivor of childhood trauma and incest, I, um, and complex and developmental trauma. I had gone through a lot of abuse in my childhood. So I needed to go back and basically rescue my inner child. Um, my wounds were completely directing my life. My inner child was hurt and broken and had basically just learned to survive her entire life. So inner child healing was monumental for me. And we all have ways that we've been hurt and wounded from our childhood that this work can be beneficial for anyone. So yeah, I broke down the speech kind of into, or the talk or whatever, into how to connect to your inner child, how to build trust, and then how to heal, and then eventually to start awakening your true essence. So connecting to your inner child. Um, the first way I learned how to connect with my inner child was through this technique called automatic writing, which is something that John Bradshaw goes into. Many other people have talked about it and write about it, but what it is, is you basically have a journal, you use your dominant hand. So for me, that's my right hand and you basically start writing to your inner child. So you can write like, how are you doing today? And then with your non-dominant hand, so that's my left hand for me, then you respond from that younger part. And it's hard to really say how this works or why it actually does something, but if you try it, I mean, sometimes at first it won't work immediately, but as you keep practicing it, um, you do start to feel like you're accessing younger parts of yourself by just using your non-dominant hand, or you can use markers or crayons, anything to kind of begin to connect to the younger part of yourself. So I began to start doing 
automatic writings. That's the way that I started connecting with my inner child. Um, it's good to use this like for myself, I had so much emotional pain from all the abuse that I went through growing up and that I was never able to feel because I didn't know how to because I didn't have a parent or a role model that was like, this is how you feel your feelings or anyone who even was validating or telling me like what I was going through was wrong. So I had so much repressed pain that I began when I would feel my emotions, I would do this automatic writing. So I would be like, what are you feeling? And then I would get an answer like, I'm feeling like I hate you. I mean, I would get all kinds of stuff that would come from my inner child. And at first, my inner child hated me. Like she was so mad, she was so angry, like she didn't trust anyone which makes sense. So um, it can be hard at first, like connecting to your inner child, especially if you have a lot of repressed pain and wounds because you're basically con connecting to hidden aspects of yourself and parts of yourself that, you know, the world, um, your family told you these parts aren't okay to bring into the light like this pain is not okay like for me i was sexually abused by my father so that wasn't okay to bring it to the light the pain that i felt from going through that wasn't okay to bring to the light so my inner child really learned like this isn't okay this isn't right i can't trust anyone to be able to talk about this with i can't trust anyone to deal with like the all the pain that i'm in so it's really then um you want to build a relationship so this is like the building trust part between your present or adult self and the different wounded pieces within you um, so you can now be the parent or, you know, or the adult or anything that you never had growing up, um, the person that you always needed. So, I mean, building a trusting relationship, you know, like, what does that look like? You know, you show up for people, you show up for those parts of yourself, you love those parts unconditionally even like the darkest parts of yourself the parts that you feel shame or guilt for like those are the parts that you need to love the most um that those wounded inner children within you need to know that you're not going to run away from them that you will sit with them through the fire that you will sit with them through the rage and the anger and the pain and whatever they are going through. Um, and basically give yourself what you never received or needed to receive. Um, so then getting into the healing aspect of that. Um, I'm just looking at my notes here. So as you have your adult present self connect with these feelings, these wounded inner parts of yourself, you can still do kind of what that automatic writing is. You dialogue with them, like your present self says, what are you feeling? Or, and you might hear from your inner child, I hate everyone. And you know, your adult self can respond with, I can understand why you feel that. So you're giving empathy, you're giving love, you're basically responding to those younger parts, you know, in the way that you needed to be heard and validated and understood, like pain wants to be just listened to and understood. And then also just feeling through whatever is surfacing, which is a very hard part of the journey, but you have to feel it in order to heal it. You have to walk through it in order to 
completely transform it. You have to surround your wounds in love and compassion and empathy. And when you bring the darkness to the light, it does transform it. Um, so it's, you know, no matter what has happened to you in your childhood, it's like really responding to those places like you would if, like, if you are a survivor of abuse, like, how would you respond to a child that, you know, was being abused, you know, but instead we can be so incredibly critical and mean to those parts of ourselves because that is what we were conditioned to do from the people around us so it's really helping to boost up the compassion from your adult um, self to the wounded places and you can become then your best friend your best healer your savior your guide and your greatest advocate from that space um the more you do engage with these inner child parts the easier it will become to connect so at first i really had to do the automatic writing a lot that is what grew my connection to the younger parts of myself that needed healing and then from there I could just go within and listen to my pain and hear what it needed to tell me and I would dialogue with it and feel it through and process it within myself. Um, and it's really just sitting with those places and if they need to cry, if they need to scream, if they need to speak because they were silenced then you hold space for those places within yourself. Um, another thing that's a little bit lighter that I did was I did a lot of inner child play dates. So it's really good to begin to allow your inner child to play in a way that they never were able to. So I would read children's books or I would play with Legos or I would do art or I would bake or I would dance. It's really, I mean, whatever your inner child wants to do, you can even dialogue with them about it. Um, but allowing them to be in to play in a way that feels free for them can also be incredibly healing to do those things. And then lastly, as we engage with this work, eventually we begin to start to tap into more of our true essence versus operating from the world from our wounds and from our conditioning. So as we heal, our wounds become less and the survival mechanisms that we had to create to survive um, begin to fall away. So like um, for myself, I was a big people pleaser. I was a perfectionist. I was very quiet a lot of my life. I never spoke my voice. I never stood up for myself. I let people take advantage of me. Um, a lot of those patterns began, began to fall away as I healed my wounds because I was moving from not operating a place of survival and wounding and conditioning anymore, but from more healing, freedom, and wholeness. And so we're like peeling back just like the layers that we all, we come into this earth and the earth just throws so much shit onto all of us. And then we have to peel back all of that layers to return to what our true essence is. So it's really like a whole phase of rebirthing. And this can basically, as you move into this phase, it can also be a time of massive change because you're literally moving from a place of victimhood, just survival, coping into being stable, feeling like you're more connected to yourself and who you really are. And so lots of things can just shift, change, relationships may fall apart. For me, I ended up 
getting divorced. I moved a thousand miles away from home um, because I felt this huge pull to find freedom and to operate more from my true self. Um, and then your soul kind of begins to guide you. You're guided from within versus your wounds and your conditioning and your soul is your guide now. And I really feel like my intuition guides me and God and what I feel within myself that is completely true to myself. And you can enter into what they call a state of flow. I mean, I don't live there all the time. I, I guess hopefully I'm heading there, but where you're really just flowing what is meant for you, what is your true essence, what is in alignment for yourself and your life and from your true vibrational standpoint and then um yeah from there you just get to live from a place of freedom and fullness and strength of everything that you've gone through and gone through this whole phase of becoming a whole new person so um yeah that's how i would describe what inner child healing is and what the process looks like for me. Um, I do help assist other people in inner child healing of how to connect, you know, talking about how, in, how to build trust with those parts inside of yourself and your adult self, um, how to engage with them, and then, yeah, how to connect to your true essence. I do kind of lead guided meditation, hypnosis of connecting to those places and then dialoguing. And I also help kind of use my intuition to help facilitate that. Um, yeah, but thanks for being here. Um, today I am here available for talking more about inner child healing. It can be deep and intense so i don't want to get into too much of that right now but i am going to be leading a trial an inner child healing channel meditation later and i'll be available for just spiritual guidance readings intuition mediumship okay and then i just got a message about the name of the book yeah, I can put it in the chat for everyone too. It's called um, Homecoming, Reclaiming and Healing Your Inner Child. So I'll put that in here. And it's by John Bradshaw. But yeah, if anyone has any questions, feel free to write them in the chat or jump on and ask. Thank you, Allison, for being so open and mm -hmm. vulnerable and sharing your everything. You've really changed a lot of lives ever since I met you. Well, thank you, Sherry. And I, I, I will continue to refer people to you because there's only so much that our healers can do when we're dealing with the dark side and things that make us feel uncomfortable. So they loved your messages. They said, can you tell us the name of the book again? Yeah, uh, they the thought chat. it was beautiful. Thank you for sharing. So everybody, if you'd like to win a session with her, put a number in the chat from zero to 100. And after this, we're going to do a speed reading. So we have, we have a few minutes. We're very flexible. Speed readings are where we're going to move everyone into different rooms for about 20, 25 minutes. And you're going to get to experience everybody who's here on stage. And you can determine who you want to hang out with uh, and where you want to be for the next six hours. Because we're going to do this until 10 o'clock tonight. If anyone's listening, welcome. If you're joining us from Facebook or YouTube and also Zoom. The party is here on Zoom. This is where the action is. This is where you have the interaction. This is where you have your sessions. This is where you win your prizes. As well, we're going to be picking some of the best 
the best prizes for the best costumes. So we haven't seen any amazing costumes yet. Uh, it's only 4.30 Eastern Standard Time. Most likely, most of you are just getting ready right now to go to your event. And we want to see you check in with us tonight and we can help support you in winning some amazing prizes tonight. Thank you, Jean, for being with us in room number one, supporting us in the, uh, the playroom. Thank you, Vicky, who's joining us from Pakistan. I know he's not feeling well tonight. He's going to be with us and he's, it's already, already the next day for him. And coming up next in room number two is going to be Ayel, who's going to um, cover for Jean and uh, at five o'clock and uh, out and and what else is going on here in room number two we have the playroom experiences this is uh room number two is where you make your appointments this is where you go to like make your five minute appointments or you can go for your extended appointments Go to Angela. She's going to be managing room number two. Go to room number two right now if you want to have your five-minute sessions for free or if you want to have your extended sessions. Many people are offering a dollar a minute. Like, wow, wow, wow. Like, you can get a dollar a minute. Some of these people are like $300 an hour. Jump into room number two right now if you want to have sessions for the rest of the day. Angela is there to take appointments for you. Okay. Awesomeness. Okay. So do we have your room number? Do we have your winning prize? Ready? Yeah. I'll do five, four, three, two, and one. Hold it up. It's 27. I don't know who's the closest. Oh. I'm trying to check it out here. We did take a little break before, so we have we have the uh, the time that stopped at four fifteen. What time did we stop? At four fifteen or? Uh... What time did we start again with you? Okay, okay. Bobby, Bobby's the winner. With 35. So yeah, I can, I'll message you privately, Bobby. Oh, look, Bobby. <laughs> Well, congratulations, Bobby. You can really use this right now. I know you're you're clapping. I, I I know you. You're just dancing in your chair. Yeah. So, guys, we're not over yet. It's only four thirty-eight. We go until ten o'clock tonight. Let me just throw on my camera. Hold on. I didn't realize I was not. Okay. Hey, hey, guys. Okay. Let me tell you what's going to go on for the rest of the night. Thank you, Allison, for joining us. You're amazing. I heard you the other day on Clubhouse. People really love what you had to say a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. So coming up now, we have what you call speed readings. We're going to put you guys into some rooms for, for about, about 20 minutes or so. We're going to move you around, whether you like it or not. If you don't like it, then you leave and come back in 30 minutes because we want you to experience what everyone has to offer. So um, right now, my Zoom engineer, Vicki, is gonna be putting you into specific rooms. It could be anywhere from one, three, five, or 10 people per room. We have no idea what, what's gonna happen. And uh, the person that is gonna be in charge, one of the practitioners is, is gonna do quick readings. This is what you call speed dating. And just go with it. If you're not happy with it, jump out of the room and go to the next room. This is your one opportunity for the whole night to jump around for the next 20 minutes to get to figure out who you want to spend some time with. Okay. Oh, are we ready, Vicki?
Okay, welcome Nancy, Karen, Mary, Gina, Beth, Jerry, Ellen, Helen, Aaron. You guys ready to go play? Steven, we're going to pop you around. Vicki is going to start pop popping you around to rooms and enjoy the experience. If you don't like it, then jump out of the room, come back to the main stage. We can move you out or you can move on your own. Just hit the three dots on the bottom of your screen to the more. If anyone's listening right now, if you're joining us from YouTube or Facebook, this is where the party is on Zoom. You go to Zoom forward slash bit.ly forward slash Zoom 1030. That's direct, direct, direct access. Zoom forward slash 1030 on bit.ly. Okay. If you guys want to have an appointment, go to room number two. Angela will make an appointment with you to have appointments with the people that are available. 